Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament in six six days, and today is day fifty-four. Today we'll be reading Second Thessalonians and starting First Timothy. So Second Te- Thessalonians chapter one verse one. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus into the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth, so that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure, which is manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. To you are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. And he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Therefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that day of the Christ, of Christ is at hand. That no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with yet with you I told you these things? And now ye know that withholdeth, what withholdeth it? he might be revealed in this time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let, until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness, and unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness but we are bound to give thanks always to god for you Brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. And now, I've done a Bible study on sanctification. It's an older one, so it was before I learned a different format. So if you could bear with the format, um, the message is still sound because it's mainly Bible talking. Uh, That's what I try to do in all my Bible studies, let the Bible speak for itself. But um, it's a very interesting uh, study, sanctification. Continuing on. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Yeah, I just want to go back to that quick. That's actually pretty good. Right? He he has given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Right? 
what is our hope? That when we die, when we're trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross, if we're true believers and not believing in vain, then we will be with God in heaven. Right? We will be with Jesus. So that is our hope. You know, people who don't have hope, they're afraid of dying. They're afraid of death because they don't know where they're going to go when they die. They, they're not believing in, you know, something greater like heaven. And probably lots of people don't believe in hell. But our hope is Jesus Christ and living with him. And I like this last verse saying, comfort your hearts. You know, when you're going through trials and tribulations, temptations, comfort your hearts knowing that God loved us. He gave his only begotten son for us, to die for us. And when we're trusting what he did on the cross for us, we don't have to fear anything. Because we're going to be with God when we die. So, I love that. You know, establishing every good word and work. Continue on. 2 Thessalonians 3. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified, even as it is with you that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. But the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Amen to that. Yes, yeah, so many times in the Bible, the Bible talks about not to be afraid, right? Do not be afraid. Do not worry. Do not fear. We shouldn't have to be afraid of anything or anyone. Right? Because God is on our side. If God be for us, who can be against us? Right? So, I will not fear what man can do unto me. Yes, they may kill me. But that's the only thing they can do. They can't touch my soul. You know, another verse. But rather, fear the one who can touch both body and soul. That's only God. God alone. That's who we should fear. Um, and on that note, fear, not being afraid of God necessarily, but having reverence and respect for God Almighty. So, I'm not afraid. Um, if I'm killed, I'll just be with God sooner. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that ye both do and will do the things which we command you. And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, not after the tradition which ye received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we have behaved not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither do we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you, disorderly, walking not at all, but are busybodies. Now, them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work, and eat their own bread. But he, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. If any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed." Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. That's sometimes what we have to do, right? Yes, we need to edify and uplift brothers and sisters in Christ, but sometimes we need to admonish them too. And, um, you know, Paul is gives perfect examples how to do that. Um, he calls people out, right? He even said uh, in one of his epistles, You hate me because I speak the truth to you? We need to speak the truth, even if we're hated. Even if people don't want to hear the truth we have to say, uh, we must always speak the truth. And I personally rather have someone tell me to my face an uncomfortable truth or a stinging truth than an outright lie. I've had that way too much in my life. And now I value people who can tell me something straight to my face, not trying to be mean, but admonishing. Right? Um, and just giving the, the straight up truth. I don't like to dance around that. You know, I'll tell the truth to people, tell the truth back to me, and that's how it should be, right? We should 
edify one another. And if we're doing something that we maybe shouldn't be doing, we need to be called out on it. Right? And that's nothing compared to what God will do. God. He will chastise us. Right? And it's better that we're called out on it by a fellow brother or sister in Christ than being chastised by God. Now, he may still chastise us. Right? He may. I'm not God, so I don't know. Um, but he may not if you correct the error of your ways. Um, but, you know, we shouldn't fear chastisement. As the Bible says, God only chastises those whom he loves. He doesn't chastise people who he doesn't love. Just like a parent punishing their child because they went down the wrong path or they're disobeying. Why? Why, why punish the child? Because you want them to go the correct way. Not a bad way. So Christ, so God, will correct us through chastisement. So it's just something to, to keep in mind. So um, my main point, so I kind of get carried away there. Admonishing, edifying brothers and sisters in Christ, uplifting and praying for one another is vital, necessary, and important. Continuing on, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always, by all means, the Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And amen. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Amen. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. This word here, I love this word. I also love the word fervent or fervently. Our prayers should be fervently. Everything we do for the Lord should be fervently. You know how I describe fervently? On fire. That's how I describe it. But um, you can use the Webster's 1828 dictionary for a better uh, definitions and that is what I use so unfeigned what's faith unfeigned oh it kind of goes along with fervently in a sense right never wavering sort of thing not wavering unfeigned from which some have swerved and turned aside unto vain jangling desiring to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous men, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for purged uh, persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Yep, Romans 3.23. We all are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. I remember that like the back of my hand because, you know, when I was um, a child, I remember going to church and doing different memorizations. Um, I think we did it for prizes, if I remember, like however many verses, I don't know. Either way is, I'm glad that that church that I was with at the time, that my family was with, um, had stuff for, for children. And I remember there being lots of resources and 
fun things to do for children. That's why I can't wait, God willing, one day to have a child of my own so I could raise them up in the Lord, as the Bible says, and do all the fun uh, children Bible things with them. So much I want to do. But anyway, back to the point here. Um, yeah, uh, my point was Romans 3.23, we're all sinners. And he's saying, whom I am chief. Why is he saying he's chief? Because of what he did to the early church. So continuing on. How be it for this cause, I obtained mercy. That in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. First uh, Timothy 2. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Learn to, I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. This last part is so important, and even I struggle with this sometimes. Pray. Right? Pray everywhere. And not just everywhere, but the Bible also specifies that we should always be in prayer. Be instant in prayer. Pray a lot. That's what we need to do. And not just that, but pray without doubting and without wrath you know some people are like oh lord rah, they get all mad and they like whatever like, why lord rah, 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 rah. without wrath and without doubting remember what christ himself said nothing doubting when you go into prayer nothing doubting so that's a very important uh, verse and part of that verse and it man all these verses about prayer make me want to do a prayer bible study i need to get on that continuing on in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly array but which become with women professing godliness with good works let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and with sobriety. Now, a lot of people probably don't like these verses, but the way I see it is it's not necessarily um saying oh woman blah 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 uh it's not you know bringing a woman down rather we both women and men both have their own role husband and wife has their own role woman has their own role man has a, his own role right so it's a separate thing division right separate um you know sometimes a woman has to do both roles, right? If, you know, if they're widow or whatever the case may be. But from the beginning, this is how God had it. The man is a leader of the household. Obviously, that doesn't diminish the wife's uh, importance and value in the relationship, in the household, in the family. Rather, we both have our own roles. So when most people will take verses out of context right i'm sure everyone 
listening knows about that people unbelievers but also fellow christians will take verses out of context and say oh the bible's sexist the bible's this the bible's that uh because of some of these verses but i don't see in my opinion i don't see anything wrong with these verses number one the reason why i don't say anything wrong with these verses because the bible is literally god's words right holy spirit inspired men to write down the words of god these are god's words so it's just how god set it up there's it's not diminishing any role it's not diminishing the female or the male whatever we're not diminishing anything rather we're pointing out the fact that we all have our own roles just like brothers and sisters in christ have their own role in the body of christ different members but all the members are part of the same body and we shouldn't diminish the feet or the hands or the eyes or the nose whatever whatever part of the body you are each member is equally important so anyway rant over so we finish that yep continue in faith and charity yep first timothy 3 this is a true saying if a man desire the office of a bishop he desireth a good work a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, not greedy, of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride he fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved, let them use the office of a deacon, being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things let the deacons be the household uh, excuse me let the deacons be the husbands of one wife ruling their children in their own house as well for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in christ jesus these things write i unto thee hoping to come unto thee shortly but if i tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. In 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving which is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. I like these verses, right? And this is why it's vital to pray before, not only do we need to pray, you know, throughout our day, throughout our life, a lot, but also it's important to pray before we eat. Dear Lord, thank you for providing my daily bread, because it is the Lord who provides all things. You think that your money in your account is yours? Think again. It's God's. Right? Everything is God's. God supplied you with a job, with whatever that got you that money. So we're stewards of the money. We're stewards of the things that God has given us. Whatever we have, it's from God. Like the Bible says, every good thing cometh from above. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. So, good stuff there. Lots of amazing verses today. Continuing on. If thou put 
the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather into godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. I just want to say this verse here. Is this verse saying that exercising is bad? No. But remember, our bodies, our lives, are temporary. Right? We came from dust, and to dust we will return. So no matter how much we, uh, you know, work out, it's not going to matter in the end. But mainly, the point is, in my opinion, this verse is talking about where are your priorities? Are your priorities about working out and looking good, vain things? Are your priorities, you know, just trying to stay healthy? Right? But number one, our priority should be God. First and foremost, God in everything we do. That's why at the end of my videos I say, put God first in everything you do. Right? It's That is our priority. God first. Then the rest later. But priority is God. Always should be God. And it's always going to be God. Because this life is temporary. Right? Nothing compared to our ever our uh, home everlasting home so continuing on this is faithful saying worthy of all acceptation for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living god who is the savior of all men especially those that believe these things command and teach let no man despise thy youth be but be thou an example of the believers in word in conversation in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. This is a good one too. Right? Pref uh, this part of the verse. Be thou an example. We need to be examples, right? We're Christians, followers of Christ. We need to set an example. We need to be that light of the world. Because we are in a dark and evil world. We need to be separate. Be separate, saith the Lord. Right? Come out from among them among the unbelievers you know another verse there's so many great verses but what's important is people watch what you do people do and uh, not just watch what you do but what you say how do you hold yourself uh, are you just out there cussing up a storm every other word a cuss word are, are you you know always negative are you always doom and gloom um are you a pessimist? Are you listening to horrible trash music? You know, what are you doing? This is why we need to be an example, right? It's kind of like, um, you know, in a sense, since we're on the topic of working out, bodybuilding. Bodybuilders, what, what's their focus? They're focusing on how well they appear, right? Well, I'm not saying to be concerned about your looks and how you appear. I am saying be concerned about how you handle yourself out in the world out in public out in your job and people are watching right so it says here in word what we speak in conversation in charity in spirit in faith in purity be an example continuing on till i come give attendance to reading exhortation to doctrine Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Yeah, here's another point I want to make. Yeah, you know, when people see you living your life for the Lord, they're going to do one of, one of two things. Think you're a crazy Christian. Uh, you know, you're going to get hated on. You're going to get persecuted for being a Christian, the Bible says. Um... But also, people are going to be like, why is this guy or gal different? What's going on with this person? Why are they, you know, why aren't they following? Why aren't they going with the flow? Why aren't they doing what the world does? Why aren't they going out to parties or getting drunk every night? People are going to wonder, right? They're going to wonder. And with that, 
you being a good example could potentially bring someone to Christ. Did you know that? You being a good example, living your life for Christ, for God, doing everything you can to follow him and his example could potentially lead someone to Christ. How and why? Because someone's seeing you do that, do those things, being different, not of the world, they're going to ask and wonder what's going on with you. And they will come to you. And that's when you have opportunity to tell them, what's different about me? I love the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a saved believer. I'm a Christian. I live my life for the Lord. And then that opens doors to tell them the gospel. Right? The good news. Tell them the good news of Jesus Christ. So, yes, people can get saved just because you are living your life for the Lord. It's possible. So, you know, even more reason to live your life as an example, as the Bible says, to be an example, to be that light in this dark present world. So, um, I love this last verse too. Sorry. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amazing, isn't it? So, that's going to be it for today. So, I ran a bit longer. I kind of went off on a bunch of different tangents. But I'm just speaking uh, my mind of what's popping out to me. So, a lot of verses popping out to me today. So, thanks so much. Hope you guys have a great uh, morning, evening, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, wait upon Him, and you'll never be sorry. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow with more of this Bible reading. I am always excited to read the Bible. So, thanks again. Take care and God bless.